Hello and welcome to another episode of Summit Coyote Outdoors, where we talk about everything outdoor adventure. And today is our next video on my backpacking gear series, and we're going to cover sleep systems. How do you get the best night's sleep that you can while you're backpacking? And your sleep system essentially contains two things. It contains your sleeping bag or quilt or whatever you're going to use uh, to roll up in and cover yourself up with and a sleeping pad of some kind. So I'm going to cover the, um, the reasons you pick different ones of each of these things. So we're going to start with your sleeping pad. Because a lot of people will go out and they'll go buy a zero degree sleeping bag to go cold weather camping and then they'll freeze to death at night because they picked a bad pad. Because here's what happens. There's material inside of a sleeping bag, right? It's, it's insulative and everything else. But when you're sitting or sleeping in it, you're laying down on it, the part that is between you and the ground, which is the cold part that's sapping all of your heat away, believe it or not, it's not usually it's usually not the air, right? It's usually the ground that is sapping your heat away. So when you're sleeping on it, all of that insulating stuff is compressed. And so because it's compressed, it's not insulating as well. And so you want a good sleeping bag, and you, but you also want a good sleeping pad. And the sleeping pads that I have here are the two that I use the most. And I also have another one that I'll talk about, but these are the two that I would say for most people are going to be beneficial. There's two types of sleeping pads. There's foam ones, and then there's inflatable ones. And they can range a whole lot in price. But the main thing you want to look for when you are looking for a sleeping pad to buy is the R value. The next thing you want to see is how big is it and how heavy is it. So the R value is essentially the resistance to heat transfer. Um, and the higher that number, the warmer it's going to keep you. And R values are tested. So if it's claiming a specific R value, it should be a, be a tested value. Um, that is not always the case with sleeping bag ratings, and I'll get into that very briefly. But there are some really good... Uh, explanations already on the internet about sleeping bag comfort ratings versus survival ratings and all that good stuff. But suffice it to say you want a higher R value pad if you're going to be doing colder weather camping. The other thing you want to look at is how thick is it. So this uh, is a Nemo. Both of these are the same brand by the way. Nemo and Nemo. Uh, this is the Switchback. It's fairly thin if you notice. But it also has all these little uh, kind of, you know, pads or whatever. And this keeps air kind of between your body and the uh, ground. And actually that helps to insulate you a little bit. It seems counterintuitive to have a gap of air. But remember, the ground is what's sapping your, your heat, not necessarily the air. And having air pockets in between you and your sleeping bag could help your sleeping bag actually work a little better. So this is the accordion style um, foam mat style sleeping pad. And these typically are cheaper. These usually are not that expensive. They're what most people kind of know um, outside the rolled up ones, which I will talk about here in a second. And this is one that if you're not going to do a whole lot of really cold weather stuff, if you're just going out on fair weather days and you're not really concerned about, you know, getting down into the 30s, uh, then you're probably going to be fine on the sleeping pad. The only downside is it's not very thick. Uh, it is pretty dense foam, so it does give you some support, but it's not going to give you a ton. And I do sometimes, if the ground is hard, 
Um, I, I side sleep a little bit, so I feel this. If you're a side sleeper, you probably did want to skip a foam pad, honestly. Uh, if you sleep on your stomach or back, then and don't move around a whole lot, these are great. The other downside that I I found with these is that they just kind of take up a lot of room. They're cool and they work, but they're bulky. And when you're having to carry this on a backpack, you almost have to carry this outside and then it's exposed to the elements and it might get wet. So then you gotta put it in a bag and it just, it's awkward to carry. It's kind of bulky. And the same thing goes for these rolled up style sleeping pads. These are what you would get for a normal camping trip, you know? You're going out to a campground, you've got your car, you're unloading your car, you know? You're not backpacking, it's just regular camping. And these are, they're okay, and I would still recommend them for like a kid or something, especially if you're gonna be, you know, going with your kids out. Um, these are fine for that, especially if it's not gonna be cold. But again, these style sleeping pads are thin, they're kind of bulky, you roll them up, and I mean, you can see how much room that takes up. So this is actually bigger even than the, uh, the Nemo, the, the accordion style one. So this, this works, and they're fine for regular camping, but I would really skip these for backpacking. They're just a little too bulky. Uh, they don't weigh much, but again, they're not gonna give you that kind of support. They're thin, um, they're not that comfortable, and they're not going to keep you warm, no matter how good of a sleeping bag you have. So, something like the Switchback. Uh, Thermarest makes a similar product. There's a couple out there. I like Nemo because they're a little bit more reasonable with their prices than Thermarest. Thermarest really likes their stuff and maybe a little bit too much. Um, and there's a whole lot uh, of, you know, weeds you can weed through uh, when picking a sleeping pad. So do your research. Uh, lots, of good, uh, lots of good resources out there for this kind of thing. But the according style, I still use this one occasionally. But I've gone to using this. This is the Nemo Tensor Inflatable Sleeping Pad. And if you notice, it is a lot smaller. It is actually slightly heavier than this because it's an inflatable, so the materi material is a little thicker. And I still carry it. I will, I will sacrifice that little extra bit of weight for the ability to pack this down into this small of a uh, package and also this has a much higher R value. Because it's inflatable and it actually has different insulating layers inside of it that are designed to reflect your body heat back at you, this keeps you a lot warmer. So the R value on this is a lot higher. And this, this style of sleeping pad is actually really handy. A lot of people might be concerned about, oh, well, it might leak air. It's not like a cheap air mattress. These things are built fairly well. And so I have never had this thing leak on me. And even if it loses a tiny little bit of air overnight, it's, it's not enough to even be noticeable until you've been somewhere for several nights, and in which case you can just kind of add a little bit of air. But they're really easy to blow up too. Uh, this one comes with a little bag that you hold out from you and then you blow into it. And what that does is it actually fills the whole bag up with air with like one breath. And then you hook it up to it and just squeeze it like you were squeezing down a, a dry bag. And it squeezes the air into it. And you really only need about three, maybe four of those. So with three or four breaths, you can pump this all the way up. And I'm not talking about like blowing hard. I'm talking about like a whew, normal breath. Three or four of those and you can blow this entire thing up. That's impressive. It's super handy, super easy. And 
it's a much better product. Now, we can talk about the price a little bit because this is a heck of a lot cheaper. But I like to be able to go in some of those cooler seasons. So this is going to keep me warmer. It's also way thicker. It's like three inches thick almost. So it is a lot more comfortable for me where I can sleep on my side, I can sleep on my back, I can roll around. It's got a nice texture to it. It's not like that uh, sticky plastic. So if you sweat or whatever, it doesn't stick to you. Um, it's got a nice kind of almost um, microfiberish um, top layer to it. So it's comfortable, it keeps you warm, doesn't uh, allow the ground to sap your heat and it packs down to next to nothing. It's also very easy to pack this. It's literally, you know, three folds and roll it up. It's kind of like a sleeping bag and it fits into this little bag very easily. The bag they give you is plenty big enough um, to fit it in there. So, no problem there. The next thing we need to talk about is a sleeping bag. Now, there's another thing that's very similar to a sleeping bag, and a lot of this is going to be very similar between the two, and it's called the quilt. And I actually don't have a backpacking quilt. A lot of people may be confused by that. Imagine a sleeping bag where there's a wedge cut out of the back, so instead of being all the way around you, it's over top of you, and then it tucks in the side of you. Uh, where you're sleeping directly on the sleeping bag or the sleeping pad, but the bag is kind of over you like a blanket, and then you tuck it in on the sides. Um, they usually have like straps that hook them in or around your sleeping pad to keep it down so you don't get drafts, um, things like that. But essentially, it's just a bag of some kind with some sort of insulating material that you sleep inside of. Quilts, sleeping bag. Between the two, people will say, well, you're saving a little bit of weight with the quilt. Um, you know, six and one half dozen. The other uh, hardcore sleeping bag people will say, well, it doesn't matter what you do. You're always going to get drafts on a sleeping or a quilt. So you might as well get a sleeping bag and just eat the weight. I have always had sleeping bags. It's what I've always used. So that's what I have. <clears throat> and... I'm not a gram weenie, so I don't really care to save the extra, like, couple ounces that a uh, quilt would save me. So, this is what I have. Um, I have a few things over on the side here that I'll talk about the difference between um, some other stuff that I have, and these are the two that I use the most. So, this smaller sleeping bag here is a... Um, kind of an Amazon special. It wasn't very expensive, but I got it because it's a warm weather sleeping bag. It's uh, rated down to a comfort level of like 45 degrees. And that's usually plenty for Florida. When I'm out in just like on a weekend or something in Florida, it is almost never below that temperature. Um, and I've had this down just a little bit below that and it's fine, especially with the uh, upgraded sleeping pad, but you don't want to carry a sleeping bag that is more than you need because they do get bulky very quickly and they can get heavy and you don't want to carry more than you think you're going to need. So check your weather. Check to see if it's going to get really cold at night because if it does, I'm not going to carry this. You see how small it is. I'm going to sacrifice a little bit of space and weight and I'm going to carry my uh, 30 degree bag. This one's rated to 30 degrees, it's a little colder, so, and if it gets to 30 in Florida, um, well, that's a really, really, really cold weekend here. But this is, you know, springtime, nighttime temperatures in a lot of places, so something like this would be fine. You'll notice this is pretty big. Um, you want something with a, a bag that has these straps with the buckles on them that you can cinch down to make it as tight as possible um, to get it as compact as possible um, just save space in your pack otherwise you end up with something like this which is my car 
my regular campground camping sleeping bag that I've had since I was, I don't know, a teenager. Uh, but you see how bulky this is. There's no bag to it. It takes up a ton of space and it's actually pretty heavy. So I think this one's rated the same as this one, uh, maybe 32 degrees, I think. But you see how much bulkier this is. So if this is all you have, you can make do, but I highly recommend something like this. And nowadays, sleeping bags can be pretty cheap. You can go pretty crazy with them and get very, very expensive, you know, $300 ones. Um, but you can get a decent bag for under 100 bucks as well. Both of these were. This one was only like, I don't know, 45 bucks. I think this one was closer to like 60. But either way, they're, uh, they're both decent sleeping bags. And this is an Ozark Trail one. Um, so I get, you can get this one at Walmart. It's a mummy bag. And I, I do say mummy bag. Uh, I'll, I'll make that distinction. It's got the little hood on it. I like those. And the reason I like those is because there's an optional bit that I will get to in a little bit that works really well with a mummy bag. So those are awesome. And if it's going to be really warm, and this is kind of my Florida tip, you can just get a liner. These are um, nice fleece liners that go inside of a sleeping bag so if you only have this 45 degree sleeping bag and you you think it's going to get a little too chilly but you don't have you don't have to rush out and buy a 30 degree bag you can bring a liner and put it inside the benefit of this is that you can take this liner out if it doesn't get that cold and you start overheating you can take the liner out um, or if for some reason the weatherman is wrong which you know they tend to be and it ends up being really hot you can just not worry about the sleeping bag and use the liner itself as a sleeping bag. It's thin, it's soft, um, and it's comfortable by itself. And when it's really warm, when I do more summertime, end of springtime camping, or when it's kind of at the very beginning of fall where it's still hot, I will often only bring just the liner because... It's lightweight. It packs down to very little. Uh, they roll down into something like this. It's very, very small, so it doesn't take up much space. And when I went motorcycle camping, I almost only took this. And the only reason I didn't was because it looked like it was going to rain and then get cold. Uh, but honestly, when it's nice out, a good liner is really all you need. Saves you some weight, saves you some time. Now, there is an optional extra thing for your sleeping system, and that is a pillow. Now, hardcore through hiker backpackers will sometimes laugh at me for suggesting, oh, bring a pillow. Um, but a, night, a good night's sleep is a great thing on a, on a camping trip, on a backpacking trip, and I value that. So I do pack a pillow. This is an, uh, an old Kelty um, camp pillow. It rolls down into itself, and um, it doesn't take up much space, really light. My only problem with this pillow is that it, it, it is kind of, well, there's not much to it. Um, so if you're a very soft pillow kind of person where you don't need a really firm pillow, this will be fine. But if you're a firm, firm pillow kind of guy like me, uh, let me tell you, this ain't enough. But what I like about this is it's got this little pocket in here so you can stuff, you know, a shirt or maybe a hoodie or something in there to give you a little bit more, um, padding. If you don't want to go out and buy a dedicated camp pillow, you can also just use a dry bag and stuff it full of clothing. The only downside to this is if you're doing a weekend trip, you're almost never bringing enough clothing to stuff inside one of these and make a pillow. And then when you have worn some of that clothing, you don't really want to put it back in there and then be like sleeping on nasty, sweaty clothing. Um, not exactly what I would uh, consider a great night's sleep. But, and, and they tend to be lumpy, you know? But 
it's an option and a lot of people do this they'll just take like an extra bag because he's way next to nothing you're carrying uh clothing anyway so you can just put some like a jacket a little hoodie would be really good in here but then at that point why don't you just roll up your hoodie and use it right the cool thing and i will and i told you i would get to this is that the mummy bags have that little pocket in there right and you can shove this into the pocket even maybe fold it up like this and shove it into the pocket and it stays where where your head is you don't got to worry about it rolling or moving or whatever you ever wake up in the middle of the night and you're like oh man i rolled off my pillow no wonder i woke up um you won't ever roll off your pillow like that because you have that little mummy bag uh hood that you can stuff your pillow in and it's always there for you um a lot of inflatable style pillows and yes they do make basically the same thing it's this kind of sleeping pad material um but it's inflatable so you just blow it up and it they they pack down to like next to nothing um those kind of things they sometimes will have straps that go around your sleeping pad to keep them in place so then they're always in the same place as well they don't move around too much um so that's those are options for you things you want to think about with sleeping bags, it's important to note that there are different rating systems for the uh, temperature rating that they have. And you got to be careful about how a brand or a specific sleeping bag rates their bags because the temperature that you see on the rating may not be the comfort temperature. It may be the survival temperature, which is a completely different rating. So there's, there's a difference, and you need to know which one they're using. And good, you know, solid, reputable brands uh, will say comfort rated to. Um, see, this one says comfort level. Um, and this says T limit per ISO, blah, blah, blah. That T limit is, um, and that's per a standard. So you got to look that up. But um, essentially what that means is that that comfort level um, versus survival rating or what the min absolute minimum temperature that this thing will work at is. You, you really want to know what the comfort rating is. You don't really want to know, like, yeah, this will keep you technically uh, warm enough to survive down to this temperature. You want to know, where am I going to be comfortable? And part of that is knowing yourself. Part of that is knowing, do I sleep a little bit warm? Do I like it cold when I'm, you know, sleeping at home? Do I crank the temperature down? I know I do. I actually like to sleep a little chilly. Um, so... Just make sure that the number you see on the bag is a comfort rating and double check it with the manufacturer. Uh, most good, reputable brands will tell you what ratings they are, and they may actually give you all of the ratings so you kind of have an idea of the temperature ranges. But always check that. That's the main thing. I'll link a video below that goes into much more detail about how to go about looking at those ratings and telling them apart because it in of itself is enough for an entire video and other people have done that to death so i'm not going to go into it but outside of that that's your sleep system make sure you get good night's sleep on the trail adventure on